they've just decided to call themselves a mentor and now people are paying them to do that. And they're not grasping this concept of like their niche, but what also makes them unique to their niche, which is a big, big part of it. But if you are going to do it, say it with your chest and with what you believe in, but expect a bit of backlash. If you don't like that style of comedy, there's a good chance we won't get on. In this video, we are going to tell you how you are getting niche all wrong and why. Hey guys, we are Dan and Mike from Business and Banter, formerly Biceps and Banter. That might be why you're here, because Biceps and Banter was our first brand name. We changed it. We haven't really stuck to it, to be honest, have we? We don't really kind of pushed it massively, but this is where in this video, you're going to learn why that isn't actually that important because your brand is technically what you do and who you are on a daily basis, more than it is a name um, and a bit of a niche. But anyway... Hope you like this content. Don't forget to hit subscribe because uh, we need you to subscribe because it makes us feel good. Purely boost our ego. It does nothing. We don't get paid for it, but it's just an ego boost, doesn't it, mate? Just do what, nice. do what Stephen Bartlett does yeah, I hope, with, yeah. with his. Um, an interesting fact. Um, we've noticed that um, we haven't. 95% of users that, that watch this video are not actually subscribed. So we're, not we're, we're, we're looking at getting any. that down to 94%. We're not so getting any you, viewers, so yeah. it's not happening. Um, but yeah, just do, just do that for us, will you? Subscribe. Oh, it comes across beggy though, doesn't it? So oh, if you don't ask, you don't get. You don't get. Call you know. to action. You got to do a call to action. So um, we're going to talk about how not only you get your niche all wrong, but why other business mentors when they talk about niche, and you probably hear it like, oh yeah, you got to get a niche. Funny how a year ago you didn't have to get a niche. Yeah, in it when we started talking about it. Isn't that mad? So like before, we would actually see other mentors um, say, "Here's why you don't need a niche." Um, you don't have a niche on the gym floor. And now all of a sudden, you do need a niche. Mm. It's it's bizarre. But I think them not knowing what... Like, I genuinely believe this. Like, And, and maybe you guys might think that um, mentors know so much about business and they're so wise and they've got the answers to everything. Let they me tell you this. They don't. <laughs> um, they've just decided to call themselves a, a, a mentor and now people are paying them to do that. So th there's no qualification that, you know, there's no threshold these are the same idiots that were idiots in their fitness businesses. A lot of, you know, in a lot of cases, they're just playing at it. It's because they don't know what niche is, and that sounds bizarre. But the the the, the biggest thing that we see people do straight away is, right, I've got to have a niche, and it's the same three things that they do. Age, gender, profession. That's it. That That's as far as they go. Yeah. Ooh, right, gender, need to, need to gender down. Well, I I think well, they're also told to come up with a name for the person. I saw that the other day. Oh, this is the, you know, the, who's your ideal? You know, it's like, it might, John. John is a dentist who's 30 and he does this. It's like, it's that specific. Really? Like you're thinking of one person and like, who's your ideal avatar? And it's like, that's not what your niche is. Like it really, and I think this comes from, like you said, a lack of understanding and the fact that they didn't know their niche, didn't yep. understand the niche. So you're naturally going to go towards, you want it to be predefined by these things because it's easier than in content. So what people do then in content is they go, oh, my niche is, let's pick on Rowan's dentists again. Sorry, Rowan, I know you're probably going to watch this. Um, I work with dentists. So then what they do is, unlike Rowan, Rowan doesn't do this, but what they then do is go, here's how to be in a calorie deficit for dentists. Yeah. And that's literally what they do. And they go, oh, if you're a dentist, you need to make sure that you eat in a calorie deficit and eat more protein. And it, like, they just throw the word in there. <laughs> And it's like, no, or like shift workers. Oh, if you're a shift worker and you struggle to be in a calorie deficit, this is how to eat. Brilliant. Well, you've just put shift workers in front of it and, and that's all you've done. And they think that by identifying that as a niche and by just saying that word within their content, that, that shift workers are going to come running to them all of a sudden just because they've said that word. And that's the thing that, that we're, we're seeing time and time and time again is people coming in and going, oh, my niche is 25 to 40 year olds who have a desk job um, and, and have a couple of kids at home. I go, well done, you've just described 45% of the UK. That is not a niche. That is 45% mm -hmm. of people who live and breathe on a daily basis. And also as well, we're starting to notice, I don't know if you've noticed this, Mike, but a lot of the niche documents we look at I sit there and when I give them their feedback one on one because that's what we do in it one on one so feedback what we based for. on the based on the work they've, they've they've given us um, is that I go I, I pick out a point that they've picked out in their niche and I go well that could apply to anyone like um, doesn't have time to prep food that's everyone that's a student that's a stay at home mum that's a corporate worker that's someone in the army loads of people right that's loads of people um, like having a drink at the weekend you just described everyone except me it's everyone. And they're not grasping this concept of like their, their niche, but what also makes them unique mm -hmm. to their niche, which is a big, big part of it. Yeah. Um, 
it, it's almost like every every point that somebody makes about the niche is still very very generic. Yet they're masquerade like they're all, but they're almost putting it into the framework of a gender, or um, because they've got kids, or because they do this job, they're a shift worker. Like like, like Dan just said, there, it's a very generic point. Doesn't have a training plan. Well, of course they don't. That's why they need a coach. Um, struggles to soundtrack at a weekend. Yeah, because everybody does. That that's not a niche point. That's everybody. That's um. That's the 23-year-old male who's going on Tinder dates on a weekend. That's the 45-year-old woman with three kids who takes her kids swimming, this class, that class, entertains them. That's the 36-year-old guy who plays for the local pub football team who has six pints after the game. That's um, the competitor, the, their meal plan is too restrictive in the week and they're binging on a weekend. Those are examples of people that are struggling to stick to it on the weekend that is niche-specific. But instead, everybody just lists the same points, doesn't really hit the protein. Yeah, but... It's the deeper details. It's why that they don't, that is the most important thing. And interestingly enough, our niche um, previously, whilst obviously quite male-led, I would say, because of the name biceps and banter, not not many females, you know, want bigger biceps. Some do. Good luck to you, you know. Um, but biceps and, and, and banter is quite a laddie name as well. We weren't, we didn't class ourselves as male-specific transformation coaches we didn't sit there on any niche document that we've written and go mm, there must be between 25 and 35 36 no no thank you well, um, we used to work with right i used to have people who had kids families I used to have single people people that were partnered up 20 some things 40 some things people that wanted to do a photo shoot people that just wanted to lose 10 kilos people that wanted to gain muscle when you look back at our client lists they were always full of people that they wouldn't fit in a traditional niche that we're talking about now. They wouldn't fit into that traditional sense of like an age range, a demographic, a profession. They just wouldn't. But they were all the same type of person in terms of their personality. It's like Mike says there about Biceps and Banner. The, the brand itself and the way that we portrayed ourselves as a brand and as a as a couple, oh, <laughs> doesn't like a midnight in public, um, but also individually, we also had slight differences in our own individual clients when we look at the demographics of those and we look at actually things that made up those people, they were slightly different to a degree as well. And that all comes about because we attracted females that had that male sense of humor that were a little bit more laddie in nature. Not, not even tomboyish, because that's not even the way it was at all. It's just more that they just had a, a way about them, a way of speaking, a way of being, whether it was blunt, whether it was sarcastic. The one thing I would say about all the people that we worked with, there was definitely common denominators around them. And none of them are what we would typically term a niche. Not a single bit of it, but that's what we would term a niche. So when we break it down, like you just said there, about when you look at the, the people and, and why they came in through our content and came in through organic content, it all made complete sense as to why they reached out to us. Yeah. Like on, on any niche document that we've done, we've, not, we've never written down an age or agenda or a profession because it doesn't need to be. And if you look at people with the best type niches, it, I, I don't think any of them will do that. Um, besides, you know, somebody like, like a Rowan, for example, who's gone heavy down the dentist route or my, my client, Greg, who um, down the um, kind of like uniform services route, emergency service um, route, where, it, where those things can work. But again, the content is geared around specific problems to that um, profession. So for example, Rowan knows that um, dentists sit down all day. Rowan knows that they have to network and go to these events. Rowan knows that they're going to get some back problems. They're probably going to um, be tighter in the hips because they're sat down all day. They probably know the, the social pressures. They probably know the, the, uh, the, the stresses and the anxieties. And if they've had a bad day, it, it's those types of things, not, um, in, not the g generic stuff. So but that's also because they both were those professions. Yeah. So they understand the lingo. The reason that they attract those people is because they understand the terminology, the jokes, the in-jokes, how they're treated. It's not so much that, like you said there about like necessarily, oh, they sit down all day. It's more so the fact that he, when, when he puts that content out there, it'll be when you're stood over a patient and you're reaching for this instrument, I don't know the fucking name of, and you check this computer and you see that they've got this wrong with their tooth. He uses, I've seen his content, he uses those things yes. within it so that dentists will go, oh my God, that's exactly what I do. Yeah. Now you could, take that out for filling out an Excel spreadsheet on a, in a corporate job or doing a sales job. And it would kind of work the same way. But it's the fact that I don't know that that terminology that he's talking about, but dentists do. It's not that he sat there going, oh, if you're a dentist, you'll sat down all day. You know, and he, he throws in those examples that yeah. only a dentist would know. He doesn't say the word dentist. He says, when you've been stood up all day and you're looking over this, you're looking in this mouth and you've seen this, 
what was it, C3 cavity, or whatever the fuck he talks about, right? They, they're all numbered, sounds aren't right. they? All the teeth are numbered. I'm it pretty sure right. a number a letter. <laughs> I don't know. I could be a dentist. Easy. Um, fun fact, Mike was going to be a dentist before he uh, went into RF. Like, Imagine me in your mouth. Imagine me in his mouth. Um, and it's important to remember that it, it's it's that that's the key thing. Is the reason that those two guys have done so well with that is because they're just speaking about past experiences. Whereas we we did the same thing. We were talking about our past experiences with yeah. fitness. So it's the same thing. And that's just why they went down that route of dentists. Like I would hypothesize that Rome would still have a fair amount of dentists if he did took out the, the from his bio and just talked about his daily life and his previous job. Yeah, he'd have a similar, not exactly the same number, maybe, but a, a higher percentage. Yeah, absolutely. So your niche is is more um, around you than it is you thinking about a specific age and so on and so forth. And a lot of it will come from what you do, the journey you've been on, your past experiences. Like Dan just said, Rowan was a dentist, Greg was a, um, in the police. It, it might be that, um, again, we used some of these analogies yesterday on our, on our members call, um, was that let's just say if you wanted to work with people that were looking to get a, a sub three hour marathon, again, the content would be niche specific towards marathon running, mobility, endurance work, fueling nutrition, um, strength um, training uh, alongside running to to um, to complement uh, to to complement marathon training, um, ways to prevent um, shin splints, you know, so on and so forth. Right, just thinking off the off the cuff because all of that content would be geared towards that way. The, the coach, the coach saying it has probably done it or is doing it. And that makes a difference. Whereas I think people go, like, this is what coaches usually do. I'm a parent, so I'm now going to be a coach for parents. And it's like, I don't think that the link is strong enough. Like, I don't think the common denominator between all parents is the same. Okay, they don't have time. Okay, cool. Well, that's the same as somebody who has a very um, stressful, um, busy job, for example. They also don't have time. It's not because they're kids. Instead, Dan would maybe attract more parents in his um, in his coaching business than I did because he was a parent and he showed that he was a parent. He didn't niche down and just work with parents. He showed what he was and how he managed around being a parent. And because of that, other parents connected to him and then they came and asked him for advice because he was quite clearly walking the walk that they wanted to walk. It, but it's just like almost people have gone way too far down their rabbit hole and taking taking it so literally that it's like no, it, it, they must be parents, um, and I'm just going to brand it as only for parents. Well, what happens if somebody's not a parent that they want to work with you? Like that's how you would go around niching. And an example of this, which is actually quite an interesting analogy, was back in the day we ran, we used to run retreats, and there was a guy that turned up who was actually Dan's client, and the guy that turned up was a bit of a nutcase. Um, that's an can you say that now? That's an understatement. I think you can say that still. Can't he's, you? he's a cashew case, yeah. is what you have to say, I think, technically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, that's niche, more specific. So, yeah. there you go. Um, But he, he turned up, um, he, he, he was a little bit out there. Um, I, th I think we you know, wanted people to arrive at 10. I think he may, maybe rocked up at half 10 late or something like that, and he'd, uh, he'd quite clearly been drinking. Well, let's just say as it is, he rocked up at 11 a.m. on a Friday with a litre bottle of gin and was like, right, yeah. when are we going to drink this then? Yeah. Pretty much the to first a, thing he said. To a fitness retreat, okay. Yeah. And um, a lot of the other clients in there would be like, <laughs> God, Mike's clients are handful, isn't he? <laughs> Um, yeah. And that is a prime example, right, <laughs> of me doing my job quite well in terms of that people would associate that type of person with me because I would have been more inclined to drink than Dan at that particular period, and, and still in that particular period of time. I maybe did attract more of the, the type that were going out because that's what I was probably doing around that time myself. Um, so it, it seemed a little bit of a mismatch that actually... <laughs> yeah, you were uh, spending your Friday mornings drinking gin. Yeah, <laughs> all, all, the all the time. Um, so it seemed a mismatch that he might be Dan's client and not mine. Um, and actually, he was a referral, weren't he, to yeah, you? So, yeah. so it probably explains One a of little bit. brothers, yeah. Yeah, so, it, um, so it, it's that kind of thing where people would kind of expect a certain type of client to be your client. That's what you're looking for. It's like, okay, I can see why this person would work with, with that person. Like you would understand what type of person would work with me. You would understand the subtle difference that might work with Dan. Like it's predictable. And I think a lot of coaches don't make it predictable. I think they've gone so far down that it's right. I need to only make content that is um, generic, that is just with like say the tagline of engineers um, or whatever, office workers. 
Um, a good example of who's doing it well at the moment, and I don't know whether we, you know, whether anything's coming in or not, but that's not really the point. But my old client, Max Silver. Yeah. I knew you were going to say his name then. Did I you? Just said, yeah, yeah. When you said office workers, I thought straight away I came to my mind. I was like, he's doing good stuff with that. He's, do, he's, content, do, he's you know doing really well. Um, again, it's very office orientated, but again, dropping in his humor, showing that he's in shape and used to work in an office. Um, and again, it's the references and the analogies and the fact that he does the call center stuff, like kind of skits. He's got the he headset get, on all the time, hasn't he? He's got the headset. <laughs> he's got yeah. the office wanker yeah. that's there with his protein shake. Again, like relatable characters that might be in an office so that it's going to resonate with people who have been in an office. It might not resonate so much with somebody who works and, on a building site, right? And just on that as well, funny enough, I would say that his content there has improved more since he's gone back to work in the office than it was before. Yeah. So it's almost that element of, because he's in that environment now, he's got all these ideas and he's got all these things going on. He sees these things happening on a daily basis. And that is why it's really useful to go for a niche that, that is just you, that where you've been and what you've been doing. Again, like I said, we don't know if he's doing really well off the back of it or what, but regardless of that, like I said, his content is nailed on and it's good. And it's a great example of of that, of like actually being in that environment has helped him remember some of these things, remember, and, and really almost put himself in a position where he can speak directly to these people without addressing them as office workers. It's pretty obvious he's there in a suit and tie with a headset on yeah. doing content. It's, ki it's quite obvious yeah. that who he's trying to, to, to approach doesn't really need to kind of be, you know, putting it on the end of it. If you're an office worker, it's, it's clear. It's clear that he doesn't work with firemen, right? It's quite clear. And I think it's that, that style of content is the bit that people need to, to run with. Because if you were to say like, if I was to ask people, anyone watching, what was our niche? Again, based on those things of, of age, profession, you wouldn't know. There isn't, we haven't got one. Our niche was very much a personality type. And I think this is where a lot of people need to branch out with their niche and go. So for example, we used to say things like, oh, what accounts would they follow? Like what? So they might follow, like our clients would have followed maybe Lad Bible, Sport Bible, yeah. that meme-based culture of fun things. Whereas I know some other people who wouldn't be as interested in the meme style stuff. They wouldn't be as interested in the sarcastic humor. Obviously ours a huge influence is the office comedy. If you don't like that style of comedy, there's a good chance we won't get on. Mm -hmm. So we drip it into all our content. There's a reason that we do that. And we still do it to this day, whereby you can see even with our content now compared to our fitness content, if you've been following us that long, there's a lot of it that's just continued. It's just a continuity of our personality because of, well, we're just who we are. Some of the topics have changed slightly, but you'll see the same traits within the content now that were in the content back then. Our spoofs, for example, still fun, still great to do. Same character. Same character and same way of doing things, but just slightly different subject matter. It's, it's exactly about. the same. Like, I used to be the, the dickhead coach and now I'm the dickhead mentor. It's, a, it's the same character. It's the same content because it's still us making the content. The niche is more about you than it is about the person you're trying to attract. Because if you demonstrate the, the, the sides of yourself that you should be doing on Instagram, then you will by definition start to attract the right type of person and that's your niche. So it's more about you. And again, look at somebody else who does well out of fitness, Cal Raystrick at Pro Coach. Again, prime example you can you know bet your bottom dollar that he's not trying to pitch his content between 25 and 35 year olds he's not gone male or female the profession i'm sure he's got teachers plumbers whatever coaches but it, it's a common goal that they're working towards and it's um, a common thing that they're that they're striving for that they're looking to turn pro so again when you're thinking about your niche think a little bit outside the box rather than just going right okay age um so, so with Callum, for example, a huge part of his, the draw to him is the standards he sets, but not just for his athletes, but for himself. Comes back to himself and what he demands. You see, again, you see him doing check-ins on his laptop in, in airport lounges, on planes, on trains. Like, there's a reason that that stuff is posted and it resonates with people. It's because they, well, they are prepared to work that hard. I am in the office. But I am in the office environment, so I, I could get some of that has. Yeah. I'm at the Ramada Inn, ready, look up. Pull over safely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and, and everywhere you, everywhere you look... Plus. 30 miles an hour tops. Yeah. Someone go shut them up. Everywhere you look, right, and every single person who's successful on social media in this industry, they have a niche. Whether you think it or not, they have one. And I, all I want you to take in this video is to look at your niche and go, is there enough of me within this? So when we say to coaches, be yourself, we don't mean be a dick. We don't yeah. mean say shit just for the sake of saying it. Is that something that you truly believe, you truly think you need to say on social media and you want to say and you want to put out there in the world, then great. Is it the sort of thing you would share with your mates? Is it the sort of experience you'd share with your friends? Like we do, we share that stuff. Honestly, there are some things that I just wouldn't post on social media massively all the time. Stuff that just you know is too far. 
right? You're, you're not Ricky Gervais, right? You can't get away with saying you're not a multi-billionaire or millionaire, whatever he is. And it doesn't, you know, if he gets cancelled, he's fine. You're not, right? So there's certain things that maybe you, you wouldn't post and talk about, right? Potentially. That's only potentially as well. Because Mike's made jokes before, that, you know. Yeah, but for uh, me, with social media, the two things, the only two things I want to say is like, anything too religious or too political, I just don't think it's the, it's just, it's, it's a bit of a poisonous thing on social media. And I think people are, are very closed-minded about those topics. I think you're just best off avoiding it. But th other than that, I think, I think you're kind of free to kind of talk about what you want. I, I honestly think that if you want to be out there as well um, with with your content and you want to be divisive and you want to be controversial, let's just say you pick that, expect to get a bad reaction from some people. Because that's, that's fine. You, you know, somebody, again, who's done really well of being controversial is going to be somebody like Andrew Tate, right? Um, again, not everybody's going to agree with him and there's probably going to be a lot of people that hate him, but there's also a lot of people that love him. So if you are going to be controversial and talk about you know, particularly sensitive subjects, it could be politics, it could be like these days probably gender, um, you know, sexuality, uh, again, that's your bag and that's not for us to say. But if you are going to do it, say it with your chest and with what you believe in, but expect a bit of backlash. You're going to. You can't expect everybody to love you. Don't be... Don't, don't turn around crying and go, oh, people didn't like that. Or I've had loads of unfollows or people are complaining. They're going to if you're saying something controversial. So for, for me, I would always say something that was probably more controversial than Dan. And I expected it. Luckily for me, I didn't really got, get much of a backlash ever, really. Maybe some people unfollowed me and stuff like that. And okay, cool, whatever. But I never said something that was so far down the line that I would feel uncomfortable sharing it in a public platform. It was more tongue-in-cheek stuff and, you know, that it's coming from a good place. And, you know, I'm actually a good guy behind that. I'm not I'm not a dick. I'm not just saying it for sake, uh, for, for, for the sake of it. I, I used to do things for a bit of a shock factor, drop a, you know, drop a, a line in there and say it with a smile on my face rather than it being a, an attack. Um, but just be prepared that if you are going to go down that controversial route that you, you, you could get a bit of kickback. I just think, yeah, sometimes people just, just they, they think that they need to go all the way to that extreme. <clears throat> you know, they're, already, they're, they're, they're basically putting none of their personality out there and then they think they need to kind of, again, portray someone that they're not. Again, we've seen that before. Um, so again, it's not something that comes naturally to some people. So just take your time with it and build up to it and share those, those, those bits that you're doing each and every day. Um, more so than, like I say, trying to just be... Um, just be a knob like Mike for the sake of it. He's a knob. He's a knob. That's it. The reason why the re look the reason why we attracted. I'll just talk to you um, about my experience. The reason why I attracted the clients that I did is because I was doing photo shoots at the time, and um, so my content was geared around that. I would show what you know my physique updates. I would show what I was eating. I would show my training. I would. Um, we would document it on YouTube as well. We would do like a bit of a build up, a countdown. Um, I. I was also at the time for large portions of the time single um, or certainly not in like long-term relationships. So I was probably doing more um, in terms of like with friends or like going out and drinking and showing that and talking about that and having more, I guess, lad style jokes, but you know, behavior. Um, so I attracted the people that resonated with that. I attracted people who, you know, like the idea of maybe doing a shoot or getting in that kind of shape, who also kind of like the idea of me leading from the front and kind of demonstrating that I could back up what I was saying, but also, you know, liked a little bit of dig at, you know, the, the industry kind of were in the same thought process because of what I was putting out and what I believed in. I, I didn't niche down to um, guys who want to get in shape for a shoot, who um, want to take the piss out of the fitness industry, who, like, it's just a certain set of your own personality traits that you need to display. And, and, and off the back of that, you will get in whatever gender, what, whatever age, whatever profession, but they should be the right type of client for you based on personality. There you go. That's that. Don't forget to uh, hit like, that long, subscribe. That long, long, Bit of a long one, that one. Long one, Sorry. 30 minutes, I reckon. Yeah. Enjoy it. Share it with everyone. And um, don't forget, if you do need more help or you want more help, you can check out our members group. The link is below in the description. Join a members group. It's 99 pounds. You get loads better advice than this. Um, <laughs> better than this. Loads better than this. Um, and we'll see you in there. No contracts. Just 99 pound a month. Easy.